So there is a maniac running around the internet and destroying MongoDB and Elasticsearch databases. <laughs> Let's discuss what we can do as backend engineers to prevent that. So guys, uh, this has been going for around a week now. It's just getting worse and worse. It was discovered, I believe, by a security researcher named uh, Bob uh, Daichenko. Hopefully I don't... I didn't butcher your name there, but I, I'm actually following him. And, and that's how I found about it. I was following him on Twitter. I follow a bunch of uh, security researchers on Twitter just because I'm interested in security in general. But uh, he reported, he started actually by having a MongoDB honeypot. And uh, guys, if you don't know what a honeypot is, it's essentially an, a, an, an, a planted... Uh, bait to attract attackers so that you can essentially find out more about the attacker themselves right where they're coming from and, and stuff like that so it's not real mongodb database or cluster or, or whatever software you're running you're running it on purpose so you can attract these attacks so he found it this way i believe that's how that's the first time i seen it. I, I think around three weeks ago and then he started seeing more and more similar attack people reporting that that their MongoDB or their Elastic Search cluster all of a sudden is wiped out. And you might say, how does someone do that? Well, let's discuss and see how this is done, right? So MongoDB, so MongoDB runs on port uh, 27017 by default and Elastic Search runs, I believe, in 9300 uh, on default. So that's the default port for these database clusters. And uh, so what, what, what the attacker needs to do is just literally run a port scan on the entire internet, uh, maybe targeted on Amazon AWS public IPs, and uh, search for these specific port IP, uh, ports. And uh, uh, you can do, they can do like a TCP half open so they can quickly find out, right? And then move on and if, it's, if the port is not open. But if they find that the port 27107, whatever it's called, 27107, and then 93 is running, then they carry on on the attack. And here's what they do. They basically try the, the, the default credentials for MongoDB, uh, which is, I think, no credentials, right? Uh, I think that's the default setting. So if you ha don't have no credentials then tough luck you just got access to right and and when they gain access to as admin they can basically drop every database just like what they did here and this is uh this is the tweet let's just show you this is what they did so uh, i don't know there is a previous picture but what they do is like basically they took loop through all the databases and just add everything as a meow basically they they add their own signature, which is meow. That's the attack name, apparently, right? And they just wiped out all the database so that the default size becomes 283 bytes. I don't know why 283 byte default, but that's what <laughs> that's what happens essentially. And when when you when you have that, basically the database is wiped. You can do, they they do the exact same th similar attack to to uh, um, to Elasticsearch cluster databases because the port is open and they can enter with the default credentials. Now, the default credentials might not work because some people actually put some decent credentials. So that then they probably run, uh, that's my guess, a rainbow table attack to kind of brute, way, uh, brute force their way into the database. And then and, and once they are in, then they try whatever database they have access to. They try to drop it or they try to change it. Okay. There is no there is no ransom or threats per se, to be honest. What, we, what, what we've been reading, this meow attack is just some lunatic. He is not asking or she is not asking for any money. She's not asking for a ransom. She's not asking for some Bitcoin address to transfer some money to restore the data. It's just... 
this this bot or this thing is just wiping stuff the most serious attack was against an actual bank so up until here guys i would buy that this attack the major the majority of the attacks against those clusters will be test databases because guess what production databases we will which we're going to talk about we will th those going to put some proper security measures to prevent that uh, from happening right so like nobody can just connect randomly to a mongodb right who's going to connect randomly to a mongodb uh, in instance right uh, that should be a well-defined uh, subset of IP addresses that is basically your backend uh, infrastructure. That's your backend servers. But yeah, it looks like Zimbabwe's payment so server running on Mongo or whatever system is this got wiped out. They was they were able to wipe the entire payment system. It's a it's an attack. Basically, it's just like pff. I don't know what's the what's the uh, what's the hit here. It just doesn't show any screenshot, but it looks like it got wiped, which, which is pretty bad. The meow attack is real, and uh, it's it's very dangerous because it's, it, it's there's no backup. If you don't have backup, tough luck, man. That's the thing. You can have backup, obviously, and and most production systems have. I mean, daily backup or somewhere that they can just reverse. If if you have MVVM, uh, MVVS, multi-version concurrency control, yeah, MVCC, multi-version concurrency control, MVCC, then you might actually be able to rewind the history in your database and then go back to a previous snapshot in time if you if you enable that feature, MVCC, right? I hope I pronounced it right, but it's just like basically any write, any delete is actually an insert, right? And a snapshot of the state of the database. So basically the database can take snapshot of itself, right? Or different implementation, it's it takes version of itself and then it can assemble the new version by reassembling the old versions essentially so so you can go back in time to version 2 version 3 version yeah this is how you enable a repeatable read isolation level if you know if you're starting a transaction you start on a version and any changes you start incrementing that version so now if, if, a, if a concurrent transaction comes in and try to change your stuff then it starts another version v4 or v3 right so you're reading v4 so you your your view is consistent i don't believe mongodb have that but some most databases relational have that feature so if you have this feature uh, mvvc mvcc then you can basically roll back or if you have backups but if you don't tough luck so guys it's a Pretty bad attack. How many? How many database? How many clusters? Do Do they say how many clusters have been attacked? Have been um, four thousand. I think this is a little bit old. It's a, it's 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 a few. It's twenty seven July twenty seven. But I think it's now reached nine thousand unsecured databases. So guys, let's talk about uh, what does it mean unsecured databases here because that's a very vague name <laughs> to be honest, right? And. Uh, Let's discuss what what can we do as backend engineers to prevent that. So unsecured databases here means it's not doesn't have credentials. It does not mean there are no encrypted channel between the client and the server. Because guess what? Even with TLS, this this, this you're not protected with TLS here. You know, guys, right? Uh, MongoDB have encryption by default, but that's it's like a, <clears throat> there is a saying it says it's a catch twenty two. If, if you have a, a bank vault, does not stop the robbers. It, it was never a, uh, there was never an incident where a, a vault actually stopped the robbers because they can just uh, they they have the key or they found the manager under arrest and they start to mug them and found the key and they opened the vault. Right, so the vault is not really, it's not gonna stop the robbers. Once they are in, they are in, right? But if you don't have a vault, 
then you're gonna attract more and more uh, <laughs> basically attackers. TLS is exactly the same here, right? If you don't have a bank vault, then you're gonna have more and more bank robberies <laughs> basically. So it's a cash 22 with the, with bank robbery and TLS is exactly the same. So if you have TLS, which is encryption being client to the server, client to the server, which is the attacker in this case and the MongoDB, the communication between them is encrypted. Who cares? <laughs> he, they are the threat. I don't care if the, the encryption, the, the channel between them are encrypted or not. Nobody cares, right? So unsecure is a little bit vague here, but when I ask the question here, I asked I asked Dan on Twitter, was it his name, Dan? Bob. I asked Bob on Twitter and he said, no, we meant actually un unsecure credentials. That's what, what, that's what we meant by unsecure. Right, so uh, uh, basically default credential, basically rainbows, uh, default password like password123 or admin admin kind of a password, right, databases. And that will basically simplify the, the attack. The other main thing here is, is uh, why the heck the port is open, right, and available to be connected from everyone, from anywhere in the planet. That's the big problem. And, and, and MongoDB is pretty good at this. When you first configure it, at least in Atlas, it only allows the local host and, and I think that's it, to be connected. So you must have gone to the MongoDB and says, MongoDB cluster, shut up and allow star. Allow everybody to connect. <laughs> and that's bad. PG admin also allows only you from localhost to connect, right? So you have to go and specifically say, hey, I want 192.168.10.4.4.3 slash 28 to connect. So that means these set of IP addresses probably is your backend application that connects to MongoDB and only those puppies can connect to the MongoDB or the Elasticsearch clusters. Unless you have some sort of an admin interface, that's another story. Uh, we can discuss more of what you do with admin interfaces. Really, I would not expose the MongoDB default admin on the internet. Yes, even if you want to manage the admin, you go to a remote machine and then from that machine, you connect to the MongoDB admin or the your database admin. Forget about Mongo, right? Anything. So those configuration must be behind a reverse proxy and reverse proxy in this case that's the only thing that the user communicate with and then anything after that is probably an internal network so there is no reason your mongodb should be first a public it shouldn't have a public ip address to be honest if you think about it because the configuration should be the mongodb cluster and and the back end server and then a reverse proxy and that guy is public Right, and then if everything, hopefully, those puppies should be in the same LAN with 10 gigabit uh, LAN Ethernet, so they can communicate very efficiently between them. And I talked about how about I don't know why I spoke Canadian for a second there, and I talk about why why you want your back end server to be very close to your MongoDB database or your database in general. And I call this video, check it out right here. It's called, uh, keep your servers close and your database closer. And I made two versions of this. And it's very, it's still, still so real, this thing. You have to keep your server, the backend server, very close to the database and it's very, it's, it's, you shouldn't send queries across the globe and the internet, public internet. This should be always behind a very high speed local area network so they can communicate because database communication is very chatty. And we saw, we did wire sharking those, some of those databases. And you guys saw how chatty database queries are. There's like a, there's a lot of chattiness going on. Going TCP. And if you were using TCP, man, that's just, there is a lot of chattiness anyway. And the protocol of the databases also adds some more chattiness. 
and and imagine these charity packets going across the globe, right? So MongoDB, Elasticsearch should not have a public IP address in my opinion, unless there is a use case that I can't think of. But that's one. Uh, ports, that's the first thing. The second thing is the port should only be allowed to connect through IP addresses that are pre-configured, not any IP address, just specific IP addresses. Those guys can connect, uh, specific, especially a subnet kind of a thing, right? So that's that's the idea of how can we do things, guys. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Very quick video to report on this uh, meow attack. Ow! Yep, uh, Elasticsearch and MongoDB databases are being destroyed. Uh, I don't think, again, I don't think most production servers know what they're doing. And if there is a MongoDB public uh, public database, there must be a, an atlas somewhere on, on, on MongoDB atlas somewhere or, or, or somewhere that is just publicly available and just available for testing. So yeah, the only real incident is, is this, is the African Zimbabwe attack. That's the only one we know that has been public and has been destroyed. So yeah, watch out for the meow attack and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Uh, let me let me know what I missed when this uh, on reporting this news and, and uh, what should I talk about next? All right guys, that's it for me today. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.